Hey, what's up guys? Coach Austin here with Coach Emily and today we're talking about the glute bridge. So when getting started with the glute bridge, how we're going to set up on the bench is one, you just need a nice sturdy bench. Um, if it's one that's kind of light, if it's very light and seems to tip over, you can actually add weight plates to both ends to kind of weigh down the bench so it doesn't tip over. But if you have a nice sturdy bench, you don't really need to do that. Um, so first cue here for Emily is to actually rest her shoulder blades on the edge of that bench and go ahead and actually get into a position uh, to lift up here. So if you go ahead and get in the top position for me. Oh, we do have some, some issue there. Cool. So if you're in that top position here, what Em's gonna do is actually tuck the chin to help create a neutral spine. If M's, why I mention that, if M's head goes up, so if she starts to look up, what we're actually going to do is going to start to see some sacrifice here, and she's actually going to create this arch or hyperextension at the hip. So if she tucks her chin, it kind of neutralizes all of that and gets you into a better position overall. So once her chin is tucked, what we're going to do next is actually compress her abs, that yeah, transverse abdominals to actually compress the, think about kind of bridging the ribs together in that compression motion to help stabilize the spine. Next is going to be to actually line up your ankle right under your knee, which is gonna have your shin perpendicular to the floor. So one adjustment I will have him make is to bring her lip, her legs into further abduction slightly. Good. So how you find that position is find where you have the best hip extension. So there's going to be a width at which you can extend your hips the furthest. And that's kind of the level of width that you want. So that's where I've got Emily here. Okay. So in terms of starting this movement, what we're going to do is actually start in this top position and try and contract our glutes as hard as we can and really find where that contraction is, where that short position is. Because if you don't find it without load, it's really hard to find it with load. So once M's done that, we're gonna go down, okay? And as we're going down, this midsection is gonna move in one, as one unit, if you will. So we're not wanting to separate there. You can kind of see that difference. And that's gonna be the difference between more of kind of a hip thrusting movement, more of an athletic based posterior chain movement in terms of the depth you're able to get and everything like that, and the difference between the glute bridge, which is more of just a glute focused strength training movement exercise. So M's abs are compressed, her chin is tucked, nice neutral spine here, her midsection moving as one cohesive unit, and then finding that short position at the top. So if she goes down one more time for me, everything's moving as one cohesive unit, to know where we stop, so how low do we go? So as soon as Emily's knees start to track backward, that's our end position. So as soon as that happens, we're going to stop. That's as low as we go. Okay, so that's that, that position there. So what we're gonna have Emily do is give a nice contraction to her glutes and drive up to that top position. Okay, so we're gonna do just a couple reps with the bar just to give you guys some cues, some landmarks to think about. So I'm gonna hand this to Emily. And so where Emily's going to place that is comfortably within that hip crease, kind of where she's folding, if you will. So it's gonna allow yourself to naturally kind of roll on that upper quad and in that hip crease where you're, where you're naturally going to fold in general. If you have it too high, you'll know. If you have it too low, you will also know. So you'll find that very naturally. So if M goes to that top position, good place to be. You can go as wide as you need to with your arms. So if you need to go wider, you can. The big thing is that we're not pushing the bar or pulling the bar at any moment within the movement. We're just allowing ourselves to stabilize the bar and stabilize our upper body and our upper body positioning. So as she's going down, again, we're not rolling the bar in capacity. Nice contraction in the glutes at the bottom, all the way up to the top. So a common mistake, a really big common mistake here that we see is going to be depth on the way down, people going too low and turning this more into a complete complex of a posterior chain quads 
everything low back, turning in more of an athletic based hip thrusting movement, which is different than a glute bridge. So the depth is something there. So remember we talked about ending in that position, ending in that position to where her knees, so if M goes down, her knees are, no, are not going to track back. So as soon as they start to track back, that's where we, we're wanting to stop. So if she comes back up to where they started to track back, which is about right there, then she's gonna give a contraction to her glutes, drive up through there. Another common mistake that we see is not having a cohesive unit with your abdominals and your pelvis. And so actually having this rotation happen at the upper back or mid back instead of at the hips. So the goal here is to actually, as M rests a little bit, as the goal with the hinge is to actually think about any hip hinging movement. So think about an RDL where you're just driving your hips back. It's the same motion in our hips here. We're just driving our hips down, okay? So as soon as they start to track anywhere other than down, that's where we want to stop. And that tends to be where that knee starts to, to track backwards. Another common mistake is comes at the mercy of depth. And so as you're going down, and if you go too low, the first thing you're going to want to do, and you'll notice this because if you've ever knocked a bench over before, that means you have too much quad involved. Okay, so if Emily goes down a little too deep here and she goes back up, she's to get back up to a position where her glutes now gain a better leverage, her quads are going to be dominating that movement. Okay, so if we're wanting to use this movement for glutes, to bias the glutes, the glutes and really, really fatigue those glutes, we're wanting to stay in that range of motion that the glutes have leverage. And so that's about there, contract and back up.